again, it's Chrissy, your Life Skills and Deployment Educator at Fleet and Family Support Center in San Diego. I'm here today to bring you another course from our Return and Reunion curriculum. This course is Consumer Awareness. So I would recommend this course to anyone who is interested in learning more about bettering their consumer awareness, learning more about um, finances, uh, anyone whose life situation has changed recently. So either think people that might have moved out of their parents home or I'm thinking a lot because we created these courses to deal with the global pandemic I'm thinking too about maybe some of our sailors who had two incomes and because of the global pandemic are down to one income um, I have a special connection with those family members I was actually laid off during the 2008 recession so I went from being very financially independent to relying on my active duty service member who I'm still married to, um, but that was a big transition for me. I want you to know that Fleet and Family does have access to helping you figure out um, unemployment insurance or understanding what kind of payment protection program you might fall under if your family member, one of your dependents has or beneficiaries has been affected. We have a lot of empathy for people going through that situation. We're all learning new things in this climate, um, so please don't hesitate to reach out to us and we will work with you in the best way we can um, through some kind of a virtual service, okay? Uh, so, for those of you who haven't seen a course with me yet, I have taught this curriculum aboard ships. This is me um, aboard ships doing what we do at Fleet and Family. We teach this return and reunion curriculum. Congratulations on making it this Far into your deployment. Um, this course, as you might guess, is created because service members can sometimes be victims of people that are trying to take advantage of them financially. And that's not always through like predatory lending or identity theft um, by organizations or by some third party way off in another country. This can also be from people who know us, people that we are related to or that we know well. So we wanna make sure that you know what to look out for, that you can defend yourself as best as you can um, from any fraud um, and that you know what to do if and when that happens. So these are the general objectives that we're going to go through. We want to talk about protecting your identity. We want to talk about avoiding predatory lenders, knowing what a predatory lender is and how you can stay away from it. Managing and understanding your credit. Any kind of savings that we can look into. A lot of us right now, um, especially if you have experienced some financial hardship, we're learning how important savings is right now and how quickly social and financial norms can change instantly. All right, um, planning and planning for insurance, which is also an important safeguard for us financially. All right, so identity theft. So I have a question and if you have time, can anyone think of some ways that you can deter identity theft? You can pause the video here. I'm just gonna wait a moment and then I'm gonna give you some. So here are some ways that you can prevent identity theft. Anything you get in the mail, we wanna make sure we safeguard it, that we shred it when we are done with it. That if we need to keep it, we keep it in a safe place where other people don't have access to it um, and that we are getting rid of any mail that we don't need any longer. We wanna opt out of any credit card offers that we don't want. Um, you can opt out of those robocalls, and you can also opt out of the mailers, the junk mailers that just show up at your house. And that's less that you have to deal with, less that you have to end up sending to the post office or having someone pick up for you later, um, and less likelihood that you could be the victim of um, any kind of identity theft. We wanna also think about safeguarding your wallet, your ID cards. For example, leaving the house with your military ID and your driver's license um, that's pretty normal for most of us. You shouldn't be carrying around your additional sec uh, social security card, okay? Um, when you're carrying your passport, um, 
we want to make sure we keep that in a space where we where it's close to our body where it can't easily be stolen because that is a big hassle and it can be a big problem for identity theft um, also credit cards we want to make sure we keep those in a safe place as well where people can't keep them or copy them um, we want to take when we have a purchase we want to make sure we take a receipt and then verify it later with our bank statements and then dispose of that receipt properly if we if it's no longer useful to us and then we want to make sure that we safeguard our checks our bank statements and our um, pay records most of those are electronic now which also brings us to a few points later on in the brief we want to make sure that those are password protected that we keep those passwords um, if you can remember all of them kudos to you I can't remember all of them but we want to make sure that we have those in a, with a strong password um, and that those cannot be taken as well because identity theft over the internet is another big problem that we can run into um, so if you feel like for any reason you um, might know of a fraud or a scheme um, there is a good website that you can reach out to it is www.lookstogoodtobetrue.com slash fraud so that's a good place to check if you feel like you know of or you just want to stay up and current on the latest frauds so the next question i have for you is how would you know if you have been the victim of identity theft so here are some ways that you might know that you have been the victim of identity theft First, if you have missing bills, if you regularly get paper statements for your utilities or your internet or your cell phone and you have bills that are missing, that might be an indicator that someone has been going through your mail, which is unfortunate. It does happen. Um, also, those again, all the things you get through the mail, we want to shred them before they go into the recycling bin. Um, I actually have seen someone in my neighborhood going through my uh, recycling bin. They have been going through and looking for things in my recycling bin. So uh, we want to make sure that that is not anything that could be used with your name, your address, and any other identifier that could be used later and sold later. So if you are receiving bills for something that you have never purchased or never owned, that could be a good sign that someone has using, used your name and your identity to purchase something. Um, also, if you have mysterious lines on your credit report, you should be checking your credit report three t uh, through th the three agencies once a year. Fleet and Family can help you out with accessing your credit report and they can also help you report anything that is incorrect. That would be the most obvious indicator that someone has used your credit. Um, if you have a credit card that you didn't apply for, it just shows up in the mail, that's a good indicator. And then if you have a denial of credit for which you have never had any credit issues before, which is scary, right? Um, the unfortunate thing that I can tell you about identity theft with regards to service members is that six out of 10 times if someone has used your credit and your name and is not you, six out of 10 times for service members, it's someone they know. So we're thinking about someone you're related to, someone who's a friend, um, uh, someone that might live within your household. It could be someone that knows that you're in a position where you cannot check your credit, where you're not regularly um, able to see what's going on with you financially, and they will take advantage of you in those moments and use your credit. And these are mostly people who are in very precarious and dire situations. So we want to make sure that we protect you first and then we can um, figure out how we can move forward so we can restore your credit. But Fleet and Family, the personal financial management team can help you with that. I'll see you for part two.